So in this video, we're gonna continue doing the front long travel setup on the Miata, and it's pretty much like a continuation of last video. So let's just get right into it. Time for the stock lower control arm. It's gonna yeep, yeep, yeep. Legitness. I might just skip all the hard work and, um, you know, take this stock control arm, plate this, because I mean, this is nice boxed. This is nicely boxed. Just plate it and extend it with some tubing. Easy, right? Yeah, you know what guys, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, plate these off and extend them with tubing. And <laughs> the, the reason I wanna do this is because I've, I've so far I've never really had a build where I can just kind of slap it together and see what happens, that type of thing, and kind of care less about because it's always been usually on my 240. So I take my time doing it, try and do it as best as I can for the most part. But I was really looking forward to this project because I'd be able to kind of like bring the level down and just kind of see like what you could do and not really care so much about it and just kind of get it done. So like on that tube front, you know, there's a lot of eyeballing involved. Usually I like basically never eyeball stuff, but because, you know what I mean? It's like, I've never done that before. So I want to try it and see how it is. And it was actually really fun doing the tube front end doing that. We knocked it out in a day, you know, or more or less a day for, for the majority of it, cutting it, all that. So. I think I'm just gonna go ahead, plate these and extend with tubing. If it breaks, cool, learning lesson, you know? That just seems way more fun than making it all out of tubing, spending all this time making some crazy tubular control arms, you know? That's for me at least, because I really want to see this thing on the ground. Yeah? What do, what do you guys think? up both sides of arms right now <laughs> dude check it out <laughs> oh my god i'm so excited for this because what i'm gonna do now is um you know obviously everything's tacked so i want to make sure it's all good before i fully weld everything so i'm just gonna mock it up on here and see how how far ever <laughs> how far out everything sits god damn boys just look at them <clears throat> size comparison okay the ball joint and hub bolted up. Why? Because I kept the whole stock area over here. Duh. So super easy. All right. You guys are seeing this, right? All right. Let's get the top one. Actually, fairly hard to work on it now. Everything is so far away, you gotta reach over the huge control lines. Still, the stock upper connected over there, that's where it sits. And this one, boys. <laughs> Great progress, dude. I'm very stoked right now. It's getting me uh, very excited. So I got this stack of metal that I gotta go and turn into a bunch of these, which will act as brackets for the coilover. Yeah. So basically just a bunch of cutting and drilling as always. <laughs> Now that I have the brackets cut out for the coilovers, 
I basically have to do a whole bunch of mocking up with what I want the extended length of the coilover to be. That way I can get them sitting at the right position and everything like that, and then I can double check it with the coilover and then blah, 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 actually welded in. Now the original plan was to use the stock Miata coilovers and then just have them basically at the stock position, make some brackets there and then just run it super out. And then, you know, probably bump up the spring rate, all that sort of thing, kind of make it so that way I could just use all stock Miata stuff, right? But then, you know, as I was talking to people, it's just kind of like, no, it's not really gonna, you know, hold up to off-road duty and it's just gonna be, you know, all sorts of complications and stuff like that. Might as well just go with like a, a full on like off-road coilover, right? So then I started going on offer up and Craigslist and just basically collecting all of the, the Razor coilovers that I could get. Now Razors are side-by-sides, right, made by Polaris. So these right here are off the old, I believe, Razor 800 S's or maybe Razor, I think it's an 800 S. So these are the Fox Shocks, I originally bought those. Then I also bought those, which are from a Razor 570, super small one. And then I was like, nah, you know what, those really aren't gonna cut it. Might as well just go full blown, get the Walker Evans that everyone has. So the rear Walker Evans on a Razor, it's like super long, right? Because the Razors, I believe, have a trailing arm set up when, when they switch to the, like the Razor 1000s and all that. So I just bought a bunch of front Walker Evans coilovers, takeoffs off of Razors, like 1000s and 1000 XPs, all that sort of thing. So I got one, two, three, four, five. So I got one spare, four of them. Two of them have already been rebuilt, and then the other three were just whatever condition as is, right? Now with these ones, and the, and the goal with these, and um, these actually end up fitting basically perfect inside there, compressed and extended, which works out really well, right? And on top of that, I already looked up, I could, uh, believe these are two and a half inch um, ID springs, inner diameter springs, so I can just go on Summit Racing and then actually for like 70 bucks for a pair of two, I could pick up new springs. I think it's 70 for a pair of two. Maybe it's 70 for one. I don't know. But anyways, but yeah, I, I can pick up uh, different springs so that way I can uh, change the spring rates on them because I even called Walker Evans up and from factory, Polaris kind of undersprung all the razors. So they tend to bottom out even on a stock razor. A razor only weighs between 1,000 or 1,500 pounds. Miata obviously weighs closer to 2,000 pounds. So these are definitely gonna have to be resprung with some stiffer spring rates. I hope that explains the whole coilover situation. So those are the coilovers that I'm gonna be using. Um, very easy to find, obviously great shocks. So it's gonna mount them up, just like I said, about two minutes ago. Now it's all tacked in place and um, it should be good to fully weld. Just gotta check it. basically right where I wanted it. The bump stop will compress a little bit more and then boom. Perfect. Perfect. Sick, sick, sick. So stoked on this. So that was really big progress right there. The coilover is actually mounted on there. Oh, I got only tacks on there, but still, I mean, I, I just tested it too between, uh, you know, full droop and compress. And it's good all the way through the cycle. Sitting pretty uh, center in there too. Plenty of room for the, the coil to go. We're gonna test out the full cycle right now. This is at full droop, but the shock still has a half inch more travel. That way it's bottoming out on all the ball joints and everything like that, rather than bottoming out on the, the shock itself. And then boom, all the way up. And then on top of that, it still has room to compress this uh, bump stop to about half its size. So I, I made it Oh, with that in mind as well. Look how freaking dope that is. So dope. Basically that entire side right there is done, right? But clearly I haven't even put on the arms or anything on this side, so I wanted to leave it as kind of like a comparison. Like stock, um, not, not stock. Huge difference. I gotta continue and replicate the entire whole process on that side. And when I'm done, I'll update you. This video is brought to you by Haviland Smart Change. I know you're probably asking, hello Mr. Offbeat, 
What is Havilland Smart Change? Well, let me tell you. Havilland Smart Change is the same great Havilland oil on the inside, but this time in a more eco-friendly container that uses 70% less plastic. Havilland has done this by using a cardboard box that then has a plastic bag on the inside filled with oil. Inside this box, we're gonna get six quarts of oil rather than our traditional five quarts, so 20% more oil, yet still at a low, low price of $19.97. This product is also very easy to use, and that is because it features a fast and glug-free pour in order to reduce spillage in your engine bay. It also features a cutout right here where you can check the oil level inside the container. If you guys are interested in the Haviland Smart Change, it is available at Walmart as well as walmart.com. Full synthetic is only $19.97 for six quarts and Walmart also provides free store pickup as well as free two-day shipping. So whether it's drifting, off-roading, or daily driving, Haviland has you covered. So with the help of my buddy Kennedy over here, AKA uh, Drift Geek, you know, uh, got this uh, passenger side all done up. Look at that fucking coilover all mounted in here and everything. So take a step back. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what it's currently looking like. So I just got, <laughs> the only thing I gotta do now is weld full beads around everything uh, as far as welding and then extend these tie rods. Then I think we're gonna be pretty Gucci over here. We can actually get this thing on the ground. So uh, exciting moments in the next few hours. Or actually probably tomorrow because I gotta go somewhere tonight. Yay. sitting over here uh, drying from paint and then I already painted the mounts inside the car over there too so next thing I got to do is take off these inner tie rods this one's actually bent and then extend this inner tie rod out about a foot right so that way it actually reaches the knuckle <laughs> so <laughs> for extending the tie rods this is the stock one over here, and this is one that I already extended 12 inches. So let me do a quick run through of how I'm going to do it. So I have my stock tie rod right here, going to cut it in a half, extend it 12 inches, and weld a solid rod in between the two ends right there to combine it. And then after that, I'm going to sleeve over it with an even uh, bigger piece of tubing, this baby right here, and then weld the ends of this. And then after I do that, I'll have a 12 inch extended and reinforced tie rod. Mark these dots ahead of time to be four inches apart from each other. So now I can measure it uh, 16 inches from dot to dot and that's 12 inches longer. Nice extended tie rods, yeah, yeah. So more or less everything is done now. I think the only thing left to cover are brake lines. Brake lines are pretty simple. Here's the stock one right here, which is obviously too short. I then went and had um, some new brake lines made locally, and these are 14 inches longer. So, you know, obviously the car's only extended 12 inches, but then I gave an extra two inches of just wiggle room, so that way I can maneuver it the way I want it and get it uh, placed right, so yeah. 14 inch longer brake lines. So we got all the control arms done. We have the tie rods extended. We have the coilover mounts done. We have brake lines done. Now I think it's just a matter of bolting everything up. Now you guys have seen me already work on this whole front end before, so I'm just gonna slap it all together and show you how it looks when it's done. All right, one, two, three. 
Ta-da! So, ooh, ooh. Check that out. Okay, so we got our nice uh, extended tie rods. We have our extended control arm, our new tubular control arm over here. We have our shock mounted up on the shock mount. Right now, even though it's fully bottomed out, the shock still has a half inch left of travel in it. So that way we're bottoming out on the arms and ball joints rather than bottoming out on the coilover. Then if you can see snake behind there is the 14 inch longer extended brake line. I think 14 inch was a bit excessive. I probably should have just done 13 or 12, but it's got plenty of line now. So as the wheel starts moving back and forth and going up and down, it's gonna have plenty of slack. Yeah. The only thing left to do is slap some wheels on it, so I'm just gonna slap the same 15 inch uh, wheels that were on the car when I got it. I'm rolling around on that, because I'm gonna wait to put the off-road tires and wheels on it until later. That way, we can really see the difference between just having it on like the stock wheels and how much higher it is, and then, you know, fully transforming into putting it on the 30 inch wheels and tires. Oof, so close. So yeah, just gonna slap those on. a quick walk around so you guys can see it at this height. Bruh. Jeez. That, that's what I'm talking about right there. Well, I guess we'll just straight drop it. It looks so dumb. I kind of regret how wide this is right now. Like a lot. Bro, this, oh my god, dude. Oh, th this is, this does not look right. This is messed up. I'm gonna say it. I'm not afraid to say it. 12 inch extension might have been too much. These coilovers are definitely undersprung because this is how much shock travel we got left, boys, right there. Out of like the eight and a quarter inches of travel, we got about that much left. So. Oh my, this is what it's gonna look like at like full squat essentially. Just, just don't, even, don't even look, it looks so bad. Bro, okay, check this out, I just discovered this. Do you guys see how soft this setup is? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, uh, you found it funny. Next video, I'm gonna go ahead and get new springs for the Miata and put them up up front so that way the front end isn't super soft like that and actually sits up fairly high and then we'll go take it probably for a little test drive with just the front end done but of course thank you for having for this opportunity if you can check out the store offbeatgarage.com follow us on instagram offbeat underscore garage and of course if you like the video and want to stay updated make sure to subscribe and put your notifications on so anyways i will see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>